Hello there, let's kick off another episode of What's Happening in Brazil. And today we begin talking about the environment. When we speak of Brazil, the Amazon forest is the ecosystem that first comes to mind. However, the country has much more biodiversity than just this. The highlands, for example, are one of the most important in the country. This time of year, the region goes through its dry season, which increases wildfires as well as deforestation. With the pandemic, the situation is getting much worse. The highlands are present mainly in the Midwest region of the country, but also extends to parts of the North and Northeast. Making up 12% of the national territory, the ecosystem is responsible for the sustenance of various indigenous and Quilombola communities, Quilombos being farming settlements founded by runaway slaves. However, this ecosystem is suffering from a rise in deforestation, mainly caused by large-scale agriculture, which has already taken over 40% of these lands. With no environmental policies in place, the pandemic has increased the levels of destruction of the highlands. Now, in the middle of the pandemic, part of our highlands have been decimated to pave the way for plantations. If they keep it up like this, they will greatly affect biodiversity, and not only the Kalunga Quilombola territory, but the whole highland ecosystem. If you look at satellite imagery, the most well-preserved areas in the highlands are the ones surrounding the Quilombo. So it's not simple deforestation, it's an act of aggression against an ecosystem being preserved for more than 300 years. Recent mapping pointed that the destruction of the highlands is moving at a faster pace than that of the Amazon, having reached 408,000 hectares of land, which corresponds roughly to 600,000 football pitches. The majority of the fires occur in criminal ones started by people living close to the areas of conservation, farmers and loggers, etc., or people who have an interest in opening up land for large-scale agriculture, land grabbing and the creation of pastures. These people end up burning the highlands and causing the massive wildfires. The highlands are known for being a source of water, having important springs that feed the entirety of Brazil. Preserving these areas also means preserving life. The Brazilian government has allowed deforestation to continue at an accelerated pace, even amid a pandemic. The consequences will be enormous and will be felt by everybody. The highlands are life, they are wealth, it's a place of diversity. And if we don't unite to stop this degradation, this uncontrolled destruction, the consequences will be felt by all. And now we keep you up to date on the week's latest news. Almost five months after the start of the coronavirus pandemic in the country and due to immense mass pressure, finally, the Senate approved a measure that grants emergency assistance to small family farmers. The bill now needs to be sanctioned by President Jair Bolsonaro. The proposal includes a renegotiation of farmers' debts and economic aid to stimulate production, which is responsible for feeding 70% of the Brazilian population. The law also includes a 3,000 real payment issued in five parcels of around 550 reais available to those who have not received any benefits from previous stimulus packages that targeted other sectors. Furthermore, low interest credit lines will be created for poor farmers. Brazil reached a sad milestone this week, 100,000 deaths caused by COVID-19. This places Brazil in second worldwide in number of deaths. The country has seen more than 3 million people contracting the illness also putting it in second place in the world. However, even in the face of a grave situation, the country ranks 63rd in the world when it comes to testing. Experts claim that there is a lack of political will and capability on behalf of the federal government to increase testing. Since the start of the pandemic, the World Health Organization has recommended social distancing as a way of preventing the spread of the disease. Brazil's federal government, on the other hand, has always been against this measure. President Jair Bolsonaro has gone as far as ridiculing the disease, calling it a little flu. In today's cultural talk, we introduce you to writer and musician Joãozinho Ribeiro. Born in the state of Maranhão, he's celebrating 40 years on tour. For him, his music is an act of peaceful political rebellion and resistance. In an interview with Brazil de Fato, the musician talks about his extensive career as a composer and performer. Minha avó. My grandmother was the daughter of slaves. My family inherited a large house in the center of São Luís in Maranhão State. 
My grandmother was black and had a piano. I think she inherited it from the Portuguese family that owned this house. My grandfather played the guitar. He was a bohemian. So they got together and that's how this whole music thing started. I have always liked its collective works. I have never been able to do anything by myself. I even have a verse that says, I am a singer of a time, a time in which I've sung, time that speaks of the future, time left over is the past, a, a singer that sings alone, sings in bad company. Though they say that artist creation is solid, the expression of this process outside of my being is an immensely collective and generously humane experience. Every time I come up with a poem or a song, that is a sort of conception within my experience that was born of the moment and all I can tell you is that the result is marvelous and beautiful. Unloading this weight of existence and sharing it with other people, that's creation. To me, culture is something dangerously beautiful, dangerous in every sense. For example, today we see people attempting what they are calling a culture war, trying to implement a culture of hate. All of this is cultural practice, deconstruction and leakage. I was part of practically all the movements post-military dictatorship here in Brazil, and my music reflects this. I am the founder of the Human Rights Society of Maranhão, therefore the struggle reflects life, and life reflects art, so they are all mixed together. You can't remove yourself from this process. So I'm a militant artist par excellence, and I don't want to be separate from this. Maybe this militancy saved me as a human being, as a citizen of the arts, as life. It's time for the most delicious part of the show. Olá, gente. Hey guys, I'm here to share with you another recipe with organic produce from the Landless Works movement. Today I will share with you a banana salad recipe. You can use any type of banana. They need to be a little firm so they can't be too ripe. We peel the banana and cut it into half moons like this. Beside the bananas, we will use lemon, onions, oranges, the onion was cut into half moons, tiny sliced, cilantro and seasonings, salt, peppers and some oil. Now I add the onions. Now we are going to add the seasoning. We will cook it cold. When we add the orange and the lemon, they cook it at room temperature as they shrink. It's like a saute with no heat. Lastly, I put in the lemon, squeeze the orange and add some lemon peels. I add some salt and black pepper. I'm gonna add a little more pepper. The idea is to make it a little spicy. I will add a little molasses, but it can be honey or sugar just one spoon, a sliver of olive oil to give it some shine. Then you mix it well and leave it sitting for 15 minutes to thicken and cook. After 15 minutes, it's ready. I just add some cilantro and done. Like at our show, hit the like button, share and subscribe to our channel. See you next week.